Hi, I'm Misty Mayberry, a certified archivist and librarian in the Dallas History and Archives Division at the Dallas Public Library. And today I'm going to talk about the Hamilton Park neighborhood in North Dallas. The Hamilton Park neighborhood formerly opened in May 1954 as Dallas' first planned black subdivision. Spanning 173 acres, it is bounded by Central Expressway on the west, LBJ Freeway on the north, Forest Lane on the south, and the Texas Instruments business development on the east. The neighborhood was named after African-American civic leader and physician, Dr. Richard T. Hamilton, who had led a movement decades earlier to build this type of community. The streets honor black achievement with names like Belafonte Drive in honor of singer Harry Belafonte and Bunch Drive after Ralph J. Bunch, who in 1950 became the first African-American to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Local Dallas educators Mary E. Hallam and Jerry W. Towns are honored with Hallam Drive and Towns Street, respectively. Two streets commemorate the creation of Hamilton Park itself, named to honor people instrumental in its development. Carl Hoblitzell, the philanthropist who provided the loans for the purchase of the land, and Louis Tobian from the Dallas Citizens Interracial Association, which was instrumental in gaining approval for and sponsoring the development. However welcome the new houses and amenities of Hamilton Park were to its new residents, the neighborhood is a product of segregation and was built to address the shortage of housing options available for the growing African American population in Dallas due to discriminatory housing and development practices and racial violence in the 1950s. Two major incidences in the early 1950s are often associated with the founding of Hamilton Park the South Dallas bombing of several black residences in 1950, and in January 1953, a bond election occurred that called for tearing down housing in black neighborhoods for the expansion of Love Field Airport. A group of home builders had been working with the then named Dallas Negro Chamber of Commerce, which is now the Dallas Black Chamber of Commerce, to publicize the needs caused by overcrowding. White landowner opposition had kept the largest and most attractive development projects from coming to fruition up to that point, and African Americans in Dallas rejected a proposed plan for a 3,000 acre river bottom site five and a half miles northwest of downtown. Some Dallas business leaders stepped up to address the housing shortage. In May 1949, theater magnate and philanthropist Carl Hoblitzell told the trustees of his charitable Hoblitzell Foundation about the desperate need for housing. And in October 1951, the Dallas Citizens Interracial Association was formed by the Chamber of Commerce and the Dallas Citizens Council to work on this problem. After many failed proposals, the area for the Hamilton Park development was chosen in part because it was already an area with black residents and thus less likely to cause protest and violence from white neighbors. The land that is home to Hamilton Park was originally owned by Anderson Bonner, a formerly enslaved person who established a farm and began purchasing property in Dallas in the 1870s. He leased out land and houses to sharecroppers, establishing a freedman's town in this area. Once the site was identified, money to purchase the land from the Bonner Estate was loaned by the Hoblitzell Foundation to the Dallas Citizens Interracial Association in 1953. With continuing support from the Hoblitzell Foundation, the association was able to borrow additional money from three Dallas banks to finance construction of water and sewer lines for the development. Planned in two phases with a school at the center of the community, Hamilton Park officially opened in 1954. By 1958, many homes built near the school were complete and middle-class families began to move in. The community was complete by 1961 with 741 single-family homes, an apartment complex, multiple churches, a shopping center, and a park. The Hamilton Park School, built in the middle of the development with houses fanning out around it, opened as a segregated K-12 facility within the Richardson Independent School District. Students from the neighborhood were together in one facility, forming close bonds and creating lifelong friendships. Andrea Hilburn, class of 1967, said in an interview with the Dallas Morning News, You know when they say it takes a village to raise a child? Well, that was the village. The educators were also neighbors. Everyone knew each other. John Jones, a science teacher and coach from 1961 through 1967 said, we shared and we cared about one another. It was just a wonderful experience being in that school and that community. Although it had fewer resources than its white counterparts, the school felt like a family. Students didn't call teachers Mr. or Mrs. They called them auntie or uncle. 
But the school would need to adapt to a changing social landscape in the wake of the civil rights movement. In 1954, the same year the segregated Hamilton Park development opened, the United States Supreme Court ruled that segregation in schools was unconstitutional in the ruling for Brown versus the Board of Education. The actual desegregation of schools in North Texas largely occurred long after the groundbreaking ruling with court oversight, often leading to forced busing of students to other schools and high tension between the parties involved. Because Hamilton Park was the only black school within the district, students were separated even within their own families and sent to schools throughout RISD starting in 1969 when the high school closed and students were split between Richardson and Lake Highlands High School for the 1970 school year. The junior high followed suit the following year, but it was 1975, 21 years after the Brown versus Board of Education landmark ruling, before RISD moved forward with a plan for desegregating Hamilton Park School. Rather than busing students to other schools, they took a different, more positive approach. With the input of Hamilton Park Civic League, the Parent Teacher Association, and the Interorganizational Council, the courts approved a pace setter integration proposal in which classes and extended learning programs on subjects not offered elsewhere in the district would be offered at the school and white students would be able to volunteer to transfer there. Hamilton Park School transformed into Hamilton Park Pace Setter Magnet a school whose student enrollment would be made up of 50% black students from the Hamilton Park neighborhood and 50% white students who voluntarily enrolled. The school offered the students an extended day with optional extracurricular programs available from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m., breakfast furnished at cost, and an expanded staff with an adult for every eight students, 83% of whom had master's degrees. The class sizes were small with individualized programs and the campus featured a full gymnasium, a track, an art facility, and a computer in every classroom plus two school computer centers. As early as kindergarten, students could enroll in Spanish and computer classes. The school offered music, art, and foreign language instruction, computer-assisted reading and math, weekly field trips, and optional activities including drama classes, team sports, gymnastics, ballet, chess, and planetarium studies. According to Dallas Morning News articles written at the time, those preparing to visit the school for the programs were speaking in terms of educational adventure rather than racial encounter. One white student who volunteered to attend Hamilton Park told the Dallas Morning News, this is the first time I've ever wanted to go back to school. I've never been able to get to the right school with the right things, but I think this one's it. At the first open house in 1975, the sixth grade instructor Helen Schul, in a quote from the Dallas Morning News said, as they told us at the service training yesterday, America is no longer a melting pot, but more like a salad bowl with unique ingredients. And the biggest success we can achieve is getting students to accept each other's cultural differences and understand them. And that's going to make the world a better place. By 1977, the Pace Setter program was considered a success having garnered national recognition and media coverage as a positive alternative to busing students as a method of integration. The school's enrollment waiting lists were set years in advance with parents in Hamilton Park signing their children up for the school as early as infancy. The Hamilton Park Pace Setter Magnet, home of the Mighty Bobcats, is still active today. With a proud history and a tradition of excellence, innovation, and leadership, the Pace Setter Magnet serves 700 students in grades pre-K through six and is still a model for other magnet schools to follow.